This video is sponsored by Samsung. Hi everyone, Ta here. Today I've got a classic what's on my phone video. So I've had this phone for like seven months now, way past the honeymoon phase and I still love it. This is the Galaxy Z Flip 3. The one phone I always seem to go back to when I'm not reviewing something else. Yeah, this has got to be one of my favorite phones of all time. I mean, there's only been two other phones I felt this attached to. The first one being the iPhone 5S and the other one was the Google Pixel 3. Yeah, I've had such good memories with those phones. But yeah, I just love that Samsung did something different here. There's really nothing like it when it comes to portability and just the whole cuteness factor. Battery life is below average and the cameras could be better, but like I'm so used to the size now that I don't think I could ever switch back to a large phone. Plus, I don't consume enough content on my phone anyways to justify carrying a big phone around with me all day. Besides, with the freestyle from today's sponsor, Samsung, I can have a true big screen experience whenever and wherever I want. Samsung's The Freestyle features a super compact design and 180 degree rotating stand, which allows you to project your favorite content just about anywhere. It can project a viewing area of up to 100 inches. So whether it be the ceiling of your bedroom or the wall in your living room, this has you covered. With The Freestyle, you don't need to be some sort of projector expert either. No one has time to fiddle with focus or to adjust the keystone. The Freestyle has a no hassle auto sensing feature that does it all for you. You'll get a crispy clear image in a matter of seconds. And with a mini HDMI port plus smart TV capabilities built right into the projector, you just need to decide what you want to watch or play. Pair all that with a premium 360 degree speaker pumping out great sound that fills up the room and you've got a unique theater experience that fits right in your bag. Click the link in the description to learn more about Samsung's The Freestyle. All right, opening it up, this is pretty much how all my home screens look these days. This is the stock One UI launcher that comes with the phone. I used to use launchers like Nova Launcher, but this pretty much does everything I need, so I don't really bother anymore. My setup is one single page. I've been trying to keep things really simple to eliminate as many distractions as possible. I even uh, got rid of the Google feed to the left because yeah, I found myself scrolling through it way too often. Starting at the very top, this is the new Samsung Dynamic Weather Widget. Uh, this is one of their nicer widgets. I like that there is an animation. I like that it changes colors based on the actual weather. Um, just tap on it and and it opens the weather app, which thankfully no longer has ads. Beside it is the Samsung Health Daily Step Counter Widget. Now that I'm pregnant, I can't work out like I used to. And as someone who used to be very active, uh, walking has been like a saving grace for me. Let me tell you, I was snacking like a monster during my first trimester. But yeah, 10,000 steps every single day. This widget helps me stay on track. Now below that is a widget called the month calendar widget. This has been a go-to mine for years. I just love the clean aesthetics. They have a bunch of themes to choose from. You can even customize the transparency to your liking. I actually hide all my vents for a cleaner look, but you can turn that on if you wanted to. So when I tap on a date, all the events for that day pop up on the screen. You can even swipe right or left through the different days. Yeah, the developer did a great job with the animations here. And adding a new event is as simple as hitting this plus icon at the bottom here. Yeah, I literally throw everything on my calendar so I need it to be easily accessible. Under that, I have four rows of apps that I commonly use. In case you're wondering, I'm using the four by six grid size. I used to use 5x6, but to me, this looks a lot cleaner. I'm big on Google services since they work across almost every platform, so you're gonna see a lot of Google apps here. Google Photos is what I use to back up all my photos and videos. I test out a lot of phones, so it's a nice way to keep all my pictures in one place. Google Keep is my favorite note-taking app. I mean, it doesn't have that many features, but I love it for that simplicity. Uh, but yeah, for any quick notes on the go, it doesn't get much better than that for me. Google Drive is my cloud storage of choice. I use it pretty much for everything. Love it for drafting content with Google Docs and backing up all my files. Google Maps is self-explanatory. I am terrible with directions, so this is a must-have for me. Next up are a couple of security apps. I highly recommend everyone use some sort of password manager. My favorite is Bitwarden. I love that it works on Mac, Windows, 
Android, iOS. So regardless of what I'm working off of, I have access to my passwords. It works with biometrics, supports autofill, and the best part, it's completely free. Google Authenticator is for two-factor authentication. Basically, it generates random codes that serve as an extra layer of protection on top of your passwords. Tide is my go-to Pomodoro timer app. Um, honestly, there are so many out there, but yeah, I don't know. I just really like this one. If you're a procrastinator and don't know what the Pomodoro technique is, trust me, look it up. YouTube Studio is of course an app for us YouTubers to you know, keep an eye on our channel. My Files is the files app from Samsung that I use to organize and view my documents on the phone. Clean, simple, easy to use layout. Uh, big fan of the categories at the top for quickly finding stuff. For a web browser, I'm using Samsung Internet. I love that it has a built-in ad blocker. But yeah, um, just a really good browser in my opinion. So I've got everyone in my family and close group of friends to download a Signal Messenger on their phones. I really like their focus on privacy. Text messaging on Android can be kind of hit or miss. Signal is a way better experience. Plus, this means I can send photos and videos that don't look like a pixelated mess to my friends with iPhones. On top of that, I keep Android messages just in case for the occasional text messages here and there. But to be honest, it's like 90% scam messages. The last four apps at the bottom are pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to go through them. Oh, one cool app I like to recommend if you own a Samsung phone is One Hand Operation Plus. I've done videos on this before, but it's extremely helpful for navigating the phone. It basically lets you customize edge gestures to whatever you want, but I like to mimic the bottom base ones since I find swiping from the edge way more comfortable. The edge panel is another feature I use all the time. The three I use are the calculator, clipboard, and smart select panel. I really like the clipboard for dragging and dropping texts or pictures into things like emails or messages. The smart select panel comes in really handy for precise screenshots, but check this out. I'll pin to screen this image here. Now, just like the clipboard, long press it and drop it into a text message email, notes, or whatever you want. Really cool, right? All right, swiping up to the app drawer, I keep things pretty clean in here too. One thing about the One UI launcher that I really appreciate is the option to hide apps. We all have apps that we barely use, but wanna keep just in case, right? Well, this is a great way to get rid of some of that clutter. If I end up needing that app, I can easily search for it. Pro tip, I highly recommend unchecking all the toggles in the search settings so just the apps themselves show up. If you keep everything turned on, I find that the search response is a lot slower. With just the apps, it's way better. My app drawer is basically one page. The second page is just a folder with all my apps on the home screen, plus the Play Store and Galaxy Store for updating my Samsung apps. Now, I'm not gonna go through every app. I'm just gonna highlight the more interesting ones. This first one is gonna sound really nerdy. It's the dictionary.com app. Hey, did you know that one of the best rappers of all time read the dictionary for fun as a kid? For fun. Listen, if it's good enough for Eminem, then it's good enough for me. In all seriousness, I'm always trying to improve my writing, so having definitions and synonyms at my fingertips is a no-brainer. Samsung Flow is a highly underrated app for Galaxy devices. It's got a few neat tricks, but it's great if you want to transfer any type of file back and forth between devices. I use it to share stuff between my phone and tablet, plus also between my phone and Windows computer. Lightroom is one of the best options when it comes to editing your photos on mobile. A bit of a learning curve, but there's tons of online tutorials you can refer to. For a VPN, I use Surfshark. Obviously, I'm gonna sound a little biased because Surfshark is a channel sponsor, but the service is actually great. As a Canadian, I use it all the time to stream content from other countries. Zoto is an app I use to sign and fill PDF documents. I use it all the time on the Galaxy tabs, not so much on my phone, but I still have it just in case I need to fill out a document or a contract when I'm on the go. 
So I discovered Overdrive last year when I started using an e-reader to read more books. Listen, buying books can get really expensive. So what Overdrive does is it lets you borrow e-books from your local library as long as you have a library card. I'll usually browse and borrow books on my phone, then download them to my e-reader when I'm ready to read it. So yeah, that's basically what's on my phone right now. I feel like I finally dialed in on a setup that not only looks good, but also works for my lifestyle at the moment. Hopefully you found a cool trick or app that you can use too. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here.